I want to address page speed performance and no, I'm not going to go into code snippets and you've got to click this setting and upload and install this. No, I'm not doing that. This is about where you may have watched a video from me or anyone else or read a post or installed a plugin to improve the page speed performance of your website. The page speed insights, maybe your mobile, your desktop score wasn't doing as high as you expected or wanted. And you've seen videos or you've read advice on forums, whatever, and you've gone and implemented it. But instead of improving your website, it's actually gone down. It's actually worsened. It's gone from like 65% to 30% or even worse, it's now hitting the zeros or the one and two. And you are not happy. Here's the thing. No solution out there is watertight and no solution is perfect. You could use a premium plugin and it might not improve your website. It could also massively improve your website. You could use a code snippet and it could improve or worsen. You could upload your fonts and either find it worsens or doesn't make things better. You may stick WebP in and again, there's just tiny movement. The thing about websites is that when you've already built it and it's existing and it's like got, you know, the, the page builder codes and however you've done it, and you now try to add some magic sprinkly powder dust over into your website to boost a score, it doesn't always work because you've already got it built. I'm going to explain this in a few stages just to kind of get the message across, okay? If you have a totally brand new website, fresh, okay, and the score from the get-go is 100% on the mobile and desktop, and you go and install extra plugins and snippets and other stuff, the score should still be up there, right? And as you build, if you keep monitoring, so I've done the header, right, I'll check. I've now done the hero banner, I'll now go check. Your score will eventually dip down from 100. It might go to 99 and then 98 and then 95. And then, you know, it might wobble a little bit because obviously your server speed matters as well. But you will know at each stage, when did it start to go down? Oh, well, it went down to 80, but that's because I got a video background. I went and stuck a carousel in the hero banner and now the score is 82. I know, right? Or maybe I went and installed the cookie consent tool and Google Tag Manager and Facebook Pixel and now the score is 65. I know why. Because the score was like that and then I added stuff and then it started wobbling down a bit. You know what happens when. And then you can make that decision. Well, maybe that snippet there is doing more than it needs to. Or maybe that setting on a performance plugin, I don't really need it anymore. You can play around until the score either goes back up or you compromise, you accept it. Sometimes you have to go, ah, just get over it, let it go, right? The score is 75. That's the best it's going to get because I need the page to look and function like that. If you need to have a video and a carousel higher up, that's what you want. That's what your client wants. You know it's going to convert. You know it's going to get the messaging across. Who gives a shit what I or anyone else says? Just go and do it, all right? But you will know why, because it's a brand new website. Now, when you have a website that already exists and your score is mid or low and you add to it, it doesn't improve always. Now, there's a 50% chance it will, because the minute you now turn your images into WebP, boom, score goes up. The minute you custom load your font, boom, score goes up. The minute you now sort out some of the unused uh, JS and CSS, boom, the score goes up. Brilliant. Win, win, win. But sometimes there will be something on there which is always going to be a hindrance or conflict with the extra code you added in. Look, if you create a dish, right, you create a new meal and someone comes along and says, well, if I made that, no, they say to you, well, how much salt did you put in? And you go, oh, I put in like a tablespoon of salt. And they go, oh, no, you should have put two tablespoons in. And you're like, well, OK, I put in one. I'll go and add in another. So you add it in. Now your dish might actually become worse. And you're going to go, but you said add two. They go, yeah, I said I normally add two. But you've already created the dish and you used one. And now you've added another tablespoon of salt in doesn't mean it will improve. It's all about where did you start? When you try to fix something which may already have issues, it doesn't work. 
if you go and get an extension built and the foundations are shit and the walls are crap and the, the rafters weren't done properly, you can go and plaster it up. You can go and paint it and decorate and stick your furniture in, but eventually it will catch up with you. Maybe the damp, maybe there'll be an issue later on. You can't always hide, which is why when there's a bad extension built, nine times out of 10, it has to be knocked down and started again. Most of you are going to say, no, we don't. We just like cover it up with a bit of blue tack and just pray for and hope everything is all right. But the same goes with website build. So if from the get go, you were oblivious or ignorant of looking at your score from the get go, and that is so important, trying to fix something that's built, you could get there. But don't be surprised if the score wobbles or goes worse, okay? Now, I want to make really, really clear, this is not meant to be like a disclaimer video saying, oh, I'm really sorry for all the page speed performance tips I've put out there and they're not working for you because they are working for so many people. But now and again, you get the odd comment from someone who goes, well, I had WP Rocket and now the score's worse because I tried your stuff. Well, yeah, WP Rocket probably worked, but were you able to fully control? And why did you go and switch to mine then if WP Rocket was working for you? Usually it's because some premium plugins, you just flick a button or a toggle, but you kind of lose a bit of control. And this is why any advice I or anyone else gives out there, I'm kind of empowering you to make the choice and the decision over what you implement and what you use. But the biggest advice I can give to everyone when it comes to page speed performance if you care about it, you don't have to care about it, okay? There's no written law that says you gotta hit 100%. No, actually, sometimes over 70% is totally fine if the website loads and works as it needs to on the desktop and mobile and any other device if you've been very careful about building responsively. And by the way, please do go and check out our $1 packs and how to build an Elementor website if you're still getting used to Elementor or you want to improve your business. Yeah, go and check it out. The link is below. But if you are thinking about all these things, okay, your performance, from the get-go, when you install WordPress, right, no page builder, just install WordPress, okay, you might you stick like, a, uh, like the word hello on a page so you got something to test. When you test it, it should be 100%. Let's talk mobile. You go and install Bricks, Elemental, loads of page builders, whatever. Again, with just one word text, okay? Hello, that's all you have to do, right? You don't have to stick in a header, images, nothing. Just stick in that word. You should still be hitting 100%. Then you go and upload your fonts. Then you go and make sure your images are WebP. Then you, uh, you might want to use like FastPress or not, or you might want to use WP Rocket or Perf Matters. It's up to you. But when you do that from the get go, your hello page should be 100%. It might go down to 99. That can happen. Server speed, don't forget, test regularly. But you should be at 100%. And then you build out your header, should still be 99, 100%. Here at Banner, 9900. I mean, I would always say that you should be well within the 97 and above area for your mobile, definitely for your desktop. Definitely 99 and 100 for there, but 97 and above for the mobile. By the time you've done like your first three or four sections or containers on your home page, because you're being careful. And remember, like I said, you go and stick in a video or a carousel or cookie consent, score's going to come down. And it doesn't matter what you stick in, the score might not go up. Or you may put in a snippet. And everyone is going, yeah, this is brilliant. It's working for me, but it doesn't work for you. Yeah, but I don't know, neither does anyone else, how you built that. And what was the score before or after you built that? Do you even know? Because I actually do keep a track record. So that sometimes when a client says, right now we want to do X, Y, Z, or I like to know what is the score. And then I, when I add in the cookie consent, I now know what is the score now. And then when I add in Facebook Pixel, if the client wants it or wanted it, because we don't really use that that much now, what is the score with that? So before and after. So if ever they go, oh, someone just checked my website and said my score was 65%. I go, yeah, because you wanted duh, duh, duh. 
You want us to remove it, we can get your score up. But why are you worrying about that? People are visiting your website, you're getting sales, you're getting conversions, and it works on the mobile and desktop. Get over it. Look, page speed performance advice and tips will not work for everyone. If you keep an eye on it from the get go, you're going to know exactly when and why the score starts to go down. And always remember to double check with your host provider because there will be moments that wobble where it goes up and down during the day. That happens. Uh, and if it starts to happen regularly, do check out with your host provider and maybe consider changing. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I like to tell the truth. I'll see you soon. Bye.